Concrete AAC blocks are new age green building material that is easy to handle compared to red clay bricks. Though larger in dimension, the blocks are light and come in various sizes, which vary from 600 mm in length by 200 or 250 mm in height and by 100 to 300 mm in thickness. A standard concrete AAC block of 600 mm by 250 mm by 150 mm is equivalent to about 8 clay bricks. The weight of one single block is about 14 kgs, whereas 8 red clay bricks, equivalent of the same volume as the block, weigh 36 kgs, that is more than double. The 10 fly ash bricks of the equivalent volume are heavier at about 41 kgs. The porous nature of AAC blocks make them light. Whereas fly ash bricks and red clay bricks can be seen to sink an AAC block, when immersed in water, floats up magically. Bricks have to be placed on the block to keep it immersed in water. After six hours, water seeps inside the two bricks, which can be clearly seen when cut into two. This makes the red clay and fly ash bricks heavier during curing. When taken out after six hours and cut, one can visibly see that the core of the AAC block is still dry. In another experiment, when a half-immersed block is taken out of water after four hours, we notice that the level of the soaked water by osmosis had increased by 25 millimeters only. Let us now compare the advantages of building walls with AAC blocks in comparison to red clay bricks. After chipping and watering the foundation and the pillars, a thick layer of mortar of cement and sand in the ratio of 1 is to 6 mixed with water is applied. As with bricks, the walls are erected by first placing blocks at the two corners. A water level pipe is used to ensure that the corner blocks are placed in a straight line. A rubber mallet is gently tapped to straighten the block. A plumb line is used to ensure that the block is vertically straight. As in bricks, a thread line is tied between the two corner blocks for aligning. After applying mortar, blocks are then placed between the two corners. If there is a gap between two blocks, the length is measured. A major advantage of AAC blocks is that they are very flexible and can be cut into any shape or size perfectly with a normal hacksaw and the help of a marking triangle. These perfectly cut pieces of the required length can easily be used to fill the gaps in the wall. After the base layer is complete, the thick mortar is not required anymore. Another distinctive advantage, a thin layer of mortar of cement-based adhesive and water in the ratio of 3 is to 1 
is prepared for building the rest of the wall. The thin layer mortar is then applied with a trowel to maintain a thickness of 3 mm and avoid wastage. As usual, the layers are erected after first laying the corner blocks. Walls with AAC blocks can be built much more rapidly than red clay bricks because it is easier to handle due to its lightweight despite the large dimension. A water level is used to ensure that the wall is horizontally straight. Another game of AAC blocks is that they do not require curing as required for red clay bricks. Just a sprinkle of water is required before applying the thin layer of mortar. Let us now study the comparison between AAC blocks and red clay bricks. To fill an area from pillar to pillar of 10.5 feet by 8 feet, 585 bricks were used. Whereas, amazingly, only 50 blocks were used to fill the same area. The time taken for erecting the brick wall was 6.5 hours. Whereas, the blocks clocked at 3 hours only. To bond 585 bricks, 1656 joints of 15 mm to 20 mm thickness, a thick mortar of two bags of cement and 20 cubic feet of medium sand was used. While to join 50 blocks with 162 joints of average 3 mm thickness, less than one bag of ready mix thin mortar was used. The cost of thick mortar was Rs. 1,120, whereas the cost of ready-mix thin mortar was about Rs. 650 only. The cost of labour for six skilled and unskilled men for six and a half hours was Rs. 1,300, whereas the cost of labour for three men for three hours was Rs. 350 only. The AAC blocks are symmetrical. Regular dimensional checks confirm the uniformity before releasing it in the market. Red clay brick walls need curing and plastering. The symmetrical AAC block walls are smooth and do not need any plastering. However, for better protection, as in the case of outer wall, if plaster is applied, then the mortar used for blocks can be a fraction of what is required for bricks. The plaster for red clay brick walls becomes thick, as the mason keeps adding thick mortar to the uneven wall to give a smooth finish. Eventually, it is 20 mm thick. Whereas, the plaster for blocks is about 10 mm only. Let us now look at other advantages of AAC blocks. A chaise cutter can easily cut grooves as required. An iron chisel can then easily scoop out the unwanted material. After concealing, the flexibility of the AAC blocks makes it easy to place conduits and pipes.
Though lightweight, the walls made of AAC blocks are sturdy and can effortlessly support heavy marbles. Large tiles can easily be bonded to the walls. The AAC blocks can be effortlessly drilled by using normal drill machine to add various fixtures. After drilling, the holes can easily be blocked with roll plugs and fitted with the screws. A wash basin, commode and other fixtures can easily be hung onto the wall. As the AAC wall surface is very smooth, a wall putty can be directly applied on the surface of the inner walls of the house to give it the perfect wall finish before painting. The race between AAC and red clay bricks proves beyond doubt why AAC blocks are fast becoming the preferred building material of choice in this city following in the footsteps of the other metros of the country. The blocks are large, easy to handle, superior in quality and, most importantly, saves in time and cost.